In this module, I'm going to introduce you to a troubleshooting strategy that's handy to know about in StarNet. When you first import data, you'll frequently find that you have to deal with a few outliers and blunders. And uh, so let's continue with this uh, Field Genius example. And uh, I, I've got a version where I've introduced a small error, and I'll show you how to find that. So before you start, go to File and Open Project and browse into your materials folder and we've got a project called FGTPS with an outlier. I'll pick on open. All right so at this stage I've pre-configured this um, data set so that it has the correct instrument settings and those are the settings that would be right in here. We're not going to get into the details of how to do that just so long as you know that this is properly configured. And if I double click on the data file, then it'll open up in the central area. Of course, it was already open. And I can see down here, here we've got the observations we need to compute a network. So let's, let's see what happens when I run it. So what you'll see here when you look at the processing summary is that our chi-square test has exceeded the upper bound and it has done it with a, an overall ratio of two. And uh, so what you're looking for in the chi-square test is you're looking for error ratios that approach one, un unless you've got no such observations, in which case they'll show a zero. And uh, this overall total, this will tell you um, whether you've got a problem in your overall network. And ultimately the test that's being conducted is this value here, this number is going to be checked to see if it falls between that number and that number. Currently it does not. This indicates that we do have some outliers in our input data. Now if I drill into it a little bit more, if I look at the statistical summary, we'll find that each measurement type has its own error factor. And again, remember I was saying these are either going to approach one if they're free of problems, or they're going to be zero if they don't have any effect on the network. And so here I can see I've got an error factor of 3.6 on my angles, and I think that's probably the cause of the problem. So that means that one of the angles, or that probably means that one of the angles or a small number of angles has a greater uh, error relative to the rest of the network then would be reasonably expected by the weighting that I've given it in the instrument settings. So a handy troubleshooting tip takes advantage of the listing. The listing always shows us how well different individual observations fit within the network. And if I open up the index tree and I go into the observations and residuals, and here I'm gonna ask for it to show me all the angle observations, here I've got a summary of all the different observations and they are summarized by listing the residual or rather what, what the adjusted angle was, what the residual was and so that's the difference between the field observation and the post adjusted observation. And um, there's a distance here where we've essentially done the trigonometry where we've looked at how much that residual would really account for on the ground. And then we've got the standard error and so that's the amount of residual that we would expect to be reasonable given the instrument settings. And so if I compare these two numbers what this means here is it would be reasonable to expect that error to vary to vary or that angle to vary by as much as 28 seconds but in fact it varies by 4 minutes and 19 seconds and if you take this number and divide it by this number that gives us an error ratio or a sta standardized residual of 9.2 and so in the standardized residual column you're generally expecting to see a bunch of numbers that approach 1 because that'll mean that their standard error and their residual are in the same range. So this one has uh, noticeably greater than one and, and it's even been marked with an asterisk. What you will find is any error that is greater than three will always be marked with an asterisk because that means that it's a little bit suspicious. And what I've done with Starnet to make sure that this feature or the, the worst 
residual appears right at the top is back in the project options if we look at listing file I have told it to sort my observations by standardized residual so that way worst will always show at the top okay but now that I've done that let's see if we can address it let's try a couple of ways of, of uh, addressing that problem so right here I can see that this is file number one so that's that number there file number one in the list and line 81 so it's using these line numbers to count down to where that observation is and I can either just scroll through and find line 81 right here or if it's a big project sometimes it's really handy to go double click and then it jumps right to it and you can see that it's highlighted so if I want to see what will happen if what will happen to my overall adjustment if I simply tell it to ignore that observations I can just put a pound in front of it and that comments it out run the adjustment and what's happened to our error factor for angles it's back to one it looks great also I've got an overall error factor of 0.94 which falls nicely within this range here and so it looks like it was a good idea to leave that observation out now there's a more sophisticated way of approaching this as well though if I think that it's only the angle that's bad but I don't want to throw away these other observations I can instead selectively weight it so I'll take the pound out and let me drag this over so that we can have a look at the whole observation what I'd like to do is after the last of the measurements that make up this line I'll put in some special what we call fixity characters and so in this case it's going to be asterisk and then ampersand ampersand so what that means is asterisk is used to weight the first measurement ampersand is used to weight the second and of course ampersand is used to weight the third and these ones have a special meaning asterisk means float ampersand means treated as normal and uh, the only other type of a uh, fixity symbol that you've already seen me use is the one up here where we use an asterisk so those or not an asterisk sorry an exclamation mark exclamation mark means hold the observation as fixed now when I say treat is normal what I'm really saying is look at this observation here and weight it according to the project options that are specified in here but this one's special because this is float so that means no matter what the value here do not consider it in the overall network okay now that we've made that change I will run the adjustment again and we should see some subtle changes here but now what we've done is we haven't thrown away good information by commenting out the whole line okay so and so just to review the feature in the listing file that I was looking at was this one here tell the program to sort by standardized residual that's the best way of showing the bad measurements or the measurements that don't have the goodness of fit that we lead it to expect with these settings they will be shown at the top of the list in your residuals list thanks so much for your interest